What's up, everybody? It's me again, and it's time to lean in, bitch. We have a special guest on the television, the television, the TV, the TV, the screen right now, Miss Tamisha <laughs> Iman, the legendary the icon. How are you doing today? I'm well. How you doing? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> How you doing? We doing good. We, are, I'm sure everyone watching right now is very excited to see you. Uh, especially due to recent events, but we're here. We're excited. We have a lot to get into, but first I just want to get into just overall how you feeling after the recent episode, just some initial thoughts. Uh, but I know you watched it back and you know, we're all pretty heartbroken. I know I am. So you tell me how you feel. Crazy. So did not expect, um, them to actually put everything together like they did. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking, exiting, getting my shit. Mm -hmm. You know, out of there. I have a uh, a show that comes on after Untucked. So mm -hmm. me and the producer, we're sitting there watching it, waiting for it to come on. Completely done, just just done. I'm talking about done because you know it's the show, yeah. so you want to be done. Why it made me cry? How watching me make me cry? So it was like, you know what? It was an amazing journey to see it back. A lot of it was like an out of body experience because mm -hmm. I was going on adrenaline. I really wanted to be there, mm -hmm. but I was so humbled to know that, you know what? I did it. At the yeah. end of the day, I did that. A bitch pulled it off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, oh, the love, the support from everybody. If I tried to write it, I couldn't have written it at all. So I'm grateful. That's good. I, I will say I watched it and I, you know, Drag Race in general has been making me tear up in general lately. I don't know why from from the from the current, you know, VH1 season, the UK season, I have just been like, it's a lot going on. And I, unlike any other season, I don't know if because we at home and it's COVID, and we're a little more emotional. <laughs> but I will definitely say it definitely touched me. And I was just like, like, this is, I was just kind of sad. But, you know, I, I could tell that your spirit was not broken. I can tell that you knew what your purpose was, uh, whether it was to win or to come on and inspire. And I think you definitely inspired, if nothing else. And so, and the ro the race is really not over, you know. For right now, maybe, but there's other races that can be done, <laughs> which we all know about. Exactly. So I, okay. <laughs> you've made that clear that that's something that you're interested in. You say so. I think that uh, we're going to be excited to see that. So another yeah, thing yeah. that happened in the episode. And at the end, when okay. you walked off, you were able to hug Candy. And, you know, last week's Untuck was, I will say, one of the, it was one of the best in a long time, in my opinion. I will say, because, you know, the fans, if you know the fans, they love drama. Uh, and they don't right. like RuPaul's, RuPaul's best friend race. And last right. week was not best friend's race. <laughs> uh, so okay. how were you able to, you know, take this, little issue that you guys had in the workroom and behind the scenes or whatever, and, you know, ba basically show growth and be like, you know, it's no tea, it's no issue. This is, I I'm okay. Like, you're my sister. That, cause that's what I got from it. <laughs> you have to meet them yeah. where they are yeah. to allow them to know who is who in, in serious. <laughs> and that's just being... Well, that's what that's Lala who I said. <laughs> and, and, but you know, Lala was wrong, though, because I don't like to fight. It's, if you bring it, yeah, I'm going to meet you there. I'm not one to start a confrontation. But I think that, yeah. you know, people that really don't understand. It's like any career that you choose. Mm -hmm. There are people that have come for you to mold and shape that, you know, that industry. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to kiss nobody ass or anything mm -hmm. like that. But respect is due. And I understand how drag race operate. Mm -hmm. Every, you know, it's a doggy dog where everybody's trying to get to the top. But in life, it doesn't have to be like that. It was a time when life was like that. Mm -hmm. Now where we are, it don't have to be like that. You teamed up with certain girls to get to the top. Mm -hmm. So why not team up with all the girls to get to the top? But it comes from you. And, it, it, it you know, it's a growing process. Mm -hmm. I had no problem with embracing Candy because after the confrontation, mm -hmm. she had time to think. I had time to go and think. Keep in mind, I, I can't say we both were wrong because one action, you know, Yes. Got a reaction. Nevertheless, it was a situation I didn't come on t on the show to pick no fight. Right. And um, she thought about what she had done and what she had said. And I guess we just came to a mutual agreement. 
And once I won that challenge, they they kind of like, well, wait a minute, we didn't woke the old lady up. <laughs> <laughs> now it's about to go down. So I didn't go there necessarily to capture the crown. Now, if season twelve when I was selected, I went to get the crown, point blank, period. Okay. But I knew my body wasn't physically fit for me to pull this off. And I, I'm not a sympathy person. If sympathy was not my thing. I I achieved it. I got there. I showed out. And like I said, I never would expect it it to be so embraced like it was by the world. I'm just overwhelmed. I am so humbly overwhelmed, like, really. But can it, uh, that's just me. I have that motherly yeah. parenting instinct. I have I have three biological kids, and Candy is still younger than all three of them. So uh-huh. it's like one of my grandkids acting out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was, it, the moment was definitely giving, you know, auntie to little niece. Like, okay, you're talking smart. <laughs> it really was. Uh, we, we all enjoyed it. Um, and you know, just to the situation itself, it was, I was surprised that it had went there, but there's only so many things that a person can say before they take you to that point. I, 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 watching it, I feel like you were, you know, kind of holding back. Even, even when you were walking forward, you still were holding back. I can, I can sense that just because we're from the same place, but <laughs> I, like, I understand, I understand that. So just with that situation, I know how it escalated was from, you know, she was saying that Simone was her biggest competition. And um, initially, I will say in my previous recap and review, I was, I understood what Candy was saying, but I also understood what you were saying because you were saying, you know, we're all competing uh, and we're all in this competition right now. So to say that, you know, she's your biggest competition kind of removes everyone else and saying that no one else is competition. From the confrontation, Candy's exact words were, um, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna argue with a bottom B. So how did you feel about that? And was there really a division in the workroom at one point about that? Well, I personally, I often say this, Mm -hmm. even though she said those things, it don't, it didn't resonate with me. Mm -hmm. I'm in a competition, but to me, she's in a league by herself. 30 Mm -hmm. years in the game, I have have beat the best. I have Mm -hmm. been beaten by the best. Mm -hmm. This is a contest, Mm -hmm. which is like Mm -hmm. going to, the store and getting a lottery ticket. This is that type of contest to me. So I'm not taking it serious. So you saying all that bottom, this, that, and the third, that means anything to me. And I get it, you know, that New York feel, that New York, we, you know, I gotta show you who I am, get to the South. In the South, we don't do that. We don't. We don't have a problem proving our worth, but you're not gonna disrespect me. And it wasn't the fact that it was disrespectful um, to them, it was Mm -hmm. disrespectful to me because I would never, I. This industry is an industry I love. Mm-hmm. I pattern myself after the greats. Um, and I carry myself a certain way because you don't have to be that villain mm-hmm. in this show. You don't have to be that. And that Simone is good, don't get me wrong, have nothing against Simone or mm-hmm. anybody in here. Yeah. But that's like me saying, um, well, girl, Simone is my only competition. And I'm sure her being who she is would be like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Right. So she probably would be like, wait a minute. Wait a... <laughs> you know, so it, it didn't affect me. I do a lot of protection of the, the girls around. Yeah. Because people don't understand. I can read the room. Mm. I can see their face. They're not going to say anything. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not confrontational. Yeah. Especially when they're put in a position of somebody they don't know. Now, if it was a girlfriend, they probably would have said, girl, you wrong, whatever. But they don't mm-hmm. know. So I'm looking at my team who's already mentally defeated because we're in the bottom. And they're yeah. thinking, oh, well, you know, we fighting really. And they bullying us. No, we're not going to do that. Not on my watch. Mm-hmm. So that was my whole thing. Like I said, she wasn't talking to me. She was just talking. It was, it was the clapping right for me. You know? <laughs> it was the clapping. <laughs> I was like, so, okay, we don't really do that because people that clap, I'll be like, uh, uh-uh. uh. But I'm so glad I did because you know God re- is writing this. Yes. It was a it was a message for everybody. Anything can be resolved through a conversation, but you got to be willing to have that conversation. That's true. That's true. And mm-hmm. to my last question, we're gonna we're gonna move from Candy. This ain't, this ain't really about Candy. It's about you. But <laughs> but the last thing I'm going to ask, you know, over the last week, people, you know, the fans, Drag Race fans can be toxic. They are something else. I love the fans. But when it comes to when queens do go back and forth on the show, one of the one of them gets bullied. They, they love to bully the queens. And so I've seen some of the things that um, have been said to Candy in regards to her mom and stuff like that, which I really don't support, regardless of whatever happened, villain or not. But 
Um, just is there anything that you could say to the fans in relation to in regards to bullying and just you know attacking her in that space? Even though you know we obviously feel she was wrong, but nonetheless, you know, no one wants to be that family attacked and stuff like that. It and you know this question has been posed to me on several different occasions. And I yeah. say this because I look at stuff not mm -hmm. from social media. I look at stuff yeah. from an adult standpoint. Mm -hmm. We all in control of our actions. Okay. So if I don't address that, y'all are bullying her, I'm not giving that energy. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do is I'm going to talk to Candy. We talked about this situation. We knew when this came about, don't address mm -hmm. it. Don't, you know, don't do anything. These are people that just now are coming into my life. Mm -hmm. So for me to say, y'all stop that, don't do that to Candy, to me, I'm wrong. Because I, first of all, I don't know y'all like that. And second, I think I'm adding fuel to the fire as an adult looking in. This is me as yeah. an adult. So I wish it would not happen. I promise you I do. But for me to say y'all stop that or y'all don't do that, mm -hmm. I don't I don't think it will be effective to the masses. Now, the thing about it is I, I, what I will say is this is just a reality show. Correct. You may, you know, feel any type of way, but we were in the moment. Mm -hmm. And those are things that happen in the moment. And it just went but there. that's not where we are. Right. Yeah, that's not where we are now. So I ask everybody, don't get caught up in the moment. Moment. It's just like anything in life. It's a journey. You're seeing episode six, but you got to get to 13. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So Correct. allow the moment to be out. You know, we did this to entertain you guys, but at the same time, it was about us trying to capture our dream. I don't wish nothing negative on Candy or any other girls on the season. So mm -hmm. I would hope that the people that love and support the Drag Race mm -hmm. franchise would not allow that to happen to each other. So I'm not going to say fans don't, that's not who I, that's not who I am, but I'm mm -hmm. going to say, please, you know, govern yourself accordingly. We all are human. This mm -hmm. is just a reality show. This is not a reality fact. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. <laughs> I don't know why I never ever say that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have a question related to the episode. So the runway, um, I feel like it was only so much you could do with a little black dress. So that's why the critiques of some dresses were kind of simple. If you could choose a runway, what would that runway theme be? Um, the thing that I think is missing from Drag Race, mm -hmm. from my world, it would be um, a gown okay. or a, a sports. It would have to be something that because drag is it's many things. Mm -hmm. And if you keep only staying in the same lane, it's going to eventually get boring. Yeah. I brought show my pageant experience, mm -hmm. my real life drag experience. So people like to see the girls dress up yeah. and put on that, that. So it would be a gown. I would want you to bring a gown or a sportswear, but it would really be something fashion. Mm -hmm. Not your not your take on fashion. But what has been already implemented, what fashion is like, if you know, you, you go into uh, a, a fashion runway and it's about gowns. Mm -hmm. You're going to get gowns. Right. Right. So you're not going to get paper gowns. You know, I don't want that. I mm -hmm. want to see glamour on the runway. Let us glam it up one good time so that people can see what, you know, this is what drag is about. Pat Bell don't put on paper and, and call it drag. She put on rhinestones. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she put on the right thing. She put on the night heel. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That hair, you may, whatever her hair is, it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So from the entertainment aspect, let's let's make one category really what represent us. Mm -hmm. And that's a look. That's fashion. So that's it. Okay. I like that. I mean, we see, we see, I feel like every season there is at least one or two pageant queens or maybe more. Um, and honestly, my take on it, I know that RuPaul loves pageant queens, honestly. Like people may, may think he doesn't, but he don't. He he's not. If from what I see, he loves a, a a clean and polished pageant queen, and so I'm surprised that they don't have more runways. You know, people. I think what he does is he puts a theme out there and allows people to give their own you know flavor and perspective with it. But like I said, in this runway, I just didn't really. I, I didn't really see honestly where it was going or how it could have went. How anyone could have been critiqued badly because. Honestly, everyone just wore a little black dress. So one you we followed the guidelines. <laughs> exactly. I agree. Um with that. And then the, the lip sync. So this lip sync, did you like the lip sync song, Miss Blue Cantrell? Um honestly, 
is one of my songs that I used to do back on the road <laughs> years ago. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm talking about years ago. So it's like, yeah, I'm revisiting this. Okay, let's do it. You know, but she, I'm glad, but because the some of the songs have been questionable, like in the last pre, in the pre previous seasons. But this season, I will say the lip sync songs have been good. It, and it's a wide spectrum. RuPaul went back there and was like, you know what? I'm, I like this song. Do this song. Yeah, that song. And I will <laughs> say, like, I enjoyed watching y'all perform too. I thought you did an amazing job. Um, I thought Katie hey. did pretty good too. And so I'm going to applaud the music this year. I know you say you've done it in the past, but um, I have another show with another host, um, Mark, and he loves that song. He screamed when the song came on. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, scream for it. Okay. So, okay. So let's talk a little, a little, a little bit about, you know, like drag history for you. So, of course, icon, legend out here. You're the mother of, mother of the house of, of Iman. In this show, there were some confusions, I'll say, because people, in your Meet the Queens, you said that Lala Ree was your drag daughter. But then when you, when you guys came into the workroom, it wasn't really a, oh, it was just like a, oh, I, I know, I know, uh, <laughs> Tamisha Iman, she's a fight. For Lala Ree, um, what does it mean to be an Iman, uh, and, and, and I guess the mother of the house of Iman versus, I guess, a drag mother versus a house mother? Because I feel like there's a, there's a lot of confusion um, in the community for some newer fans who are not so aware of what that is. Well, actually, actually I'm sorry. They, they're the same. Okay. Our roles are the same. Mm -hmm. The only thing about it is one focus on the ballroom. Right. And another one focus on the pageant or, you know, what my, my family is a pageant oriented um, mm -hmm. to a certain degree. But um, I can't say it really, it, it's not a difference. I can speak for my family because right. how I, I, I developed my kids were different. Mm -hmm. My kids, even though it, it's an entertainment family, mm -hmm. your life has to be in order. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm very big. Like when I really first started out, a lot of my kids were um, given to me by their parents. And when I say given to me, their parents okayed me to oversee them because they didn't understand the gay, you know. Mm -hmm. So I know you're a good person. I know you, you know. You've been doing this a long time. You're going to look out for my baby. So a lot of my kids, I had to make sure they finished high school. Drag, if you wanted to do drag, like, you could perform. And, and when I was living in Florida, you could we could get together, some at my house. Y'all could do shows at my house or whatever to get the aesthetics up mm -hmm. on the weekend. But you got to make sure your life is in order. If my kids come in and they are battling um, drugs, we getting, you know, we getting help before right. we do anything. Right. So I think my, my parents skills is this this drag is secondary this is second nature i can do this while, without thinking about it mm -hmm. and you can as well you can make a career from it however you want to go the opportunity is there mm -hmm. but who gonna take care of this drag persona you created you are so we have to make sure your life is in order at all costs you know it does not matter um how good you are how how you rise if you don't have an apartment, a car, or the things that an adult of your age or situation should have, mm -hmm. then we're on the wrong path. So I have to, I produce great people in society. That was my goal. The drag is secondary. We can do this in our sleep. But I would rather, you know, produce great people in the world. Okay. And you That's my dick. My dick. And you have produced some great people. This, that video <laughs> of your daughter has surfaced around around the world, dropping out the ceiling. I yeah. try to drive out the ceiling, and it didn't work out. <laughs> it is everywhere. It is all over no. social media. I had never seen yeah. it before then, too. It actually was sent to me from my right. mother, and then I watched it. But then after that, obviously, right after it, because they aired it on the show too, and then from that point, right. it just went all around the world. So it's you know everywhere. Like, how do you feel yeah. about that? Like, that that is your product. I guess not product, but that is your, that's part of your legacy. Yeah, but see, like, I have a lot of kids that are passed on. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I, this gay lifestyle is something. Yeah. So keep in mind, if you if you have gay family members mm -hmm. or just good friends, you mm -hmm. travel a lot of places, y'all hang out a lot of places. So once my family left, I would still take their presence wherever I would go and I know they would be. Mm -hmm. Tandy would have been on that stage. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Tandy would have been the moment. And I celebrate all of my kids the exact same way. I take them wherever. Tandy deserved for the world to see her. And keep in mind, that ain't even the crazy stuff that the child did. <laughs> you, <know, laughs> you said that's I more. Have <laughs> you oh, said that ain't even I, it. <laughs> she was a 
Danny was a daredevil, but she was an entertainer at heart. It was effortless. Yeah. She loved the stage. You know, things happened in her life, and it it caused her demise. But it wasn't her fault. It was just that's why it's so important to nourish and educate the youth, because you don't know what they you know future may hold. But yeah. my baby was great. I ain't even gonna lie, my baby was great. And if you see another video of me doing Tamisha Mon, um. With me dancing and the music go out, Tandy is right there behind me. A lot of videos you're gonna see me, she's right there behind behind me. Uh, uh, right there with. Me. She's always right there with. Me. So, I was proud. That's good. I, 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 the video, like, I'm just like, I know it had to hurt, but look, it didn't hurt. And then the, I think the heel broke too. <laughs> there was no stopping. It is. When we practice it. We we practiced it that day. Uh -huh. Tandy oh, that same day. We was like. Yeah, like, because we wanted to, see, she was like, Mama, I want to fall out the ceiling. I knew she was a daredevil. <laughs> so my thing is, okay, girl, let me see how you get up here and be safe. Because yeah. she'll do anything. So we got up there. I said, You got to go up here, but you're going to have to go up a number before the girl. Mm -hmm. Long story short, Tandy goes up there. She jumps down and stands. She's like, Okay. I said, You want to do it again? She's like, I got it. That night, I'm standing by the stage. She falls into a split. Wouldn't expect anything else. Then she come off the stage. She said, Mama, did you get it? I said, What? My heel broke when I did the split. I was so tender, you danced the whole time. She said, yeah. But she was just that. Nothing bothered her. So my baby was amazing. She was resilient. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So with pageant experience, I know we talked about that. You said you would like to see more glamour on uh, the stage. And I, we talked about pageant queens. Do you feel like, you know, because how many, how many pageants have you competed in in the past, because you gave the number on on the show, but if you can give a more accurate count, if that wasn't accurate, what? How many pageants have you competed in? Um, honestly, I probably have done because it's been thirty years. Like when I first started mm -hmm. out, we was doing pageants like seemed like every other week. Mm -hmm. So it's been like a total like one ninety eight. It's like very shy of two hundred, if mm -hmm. not like two hundred one. Because that was my way of life. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That was how I supported myself. So y'all could be having Miss Chu Man Chu. I'm coming. Good evening, ladies. <laughs> I'm coming. You know, y'all three dollars. I gotta pay my rent, baby. Three dollars I need it. <laughs> so that was that was my world. Um, yeah, but I've won about ninety nine. <laughs> so really, half of them. I but, mean, but that, to be competing, I'm sure. Pageants, you know, in the time, especially even when I was coming up, were a lot different than they are now, and they were uh, intense. <laughs> I've only been to a few now, and I've actually competed in one. But um, yeah, it's 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 a whole different ball game. So I understand back then it was a lot more, <laughs> a lot more going on than Untuck was last week. I'm sure. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, but you know, that was my like fun fact mm -hmm. back in the day in the South. The girls didn't have uh, rental cars and cars, so we had U-Hauls. So we would get the U-Hauls, and we would travel from city to city. That's how a lot of us saw, you know, different, because we were young. Yeah. The older people would say, come on, get in this U-Haul, baby. We hit the road. We in Memphis, Dallas. We everywhere doing a pageant. <laughs> it was just that serious. Like, y'all were getting, we, getting uh, the, the U-Haul with the back on it, like the, what, what, what kind of U-Haul truck? <laughs> It was a small U-Haul. Okay. <laughs> you, know, you remember the small? <laughs> yeah, the little small, the real small. I think it's like, but well, I don't know, I don't know then, but now it's like twenty dollars for like something. It's very cheap, yeah, but it's exactly. very, yeah, it's very inexpensive. Yeah. yeah. Come on, U-Haul. Taking it on the. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use U-Haul to take, you know, to take my my couch to the next apartment. <laughs> but y'all are doing it for pageants. That's, That's everything. <laughs> hey, hey, put your pops in there. Depends on the pageant. Put your pops in there. And, and go get that money. <laughs> so do you feel like your pageant experience and all the pageants you competed in and won, it was able to prepare you for the competition? Or do you, and as far as hindrance, do you think that it hindered you? On, on which side do you feel, did it help more or did it hinder you, do you feel? Well, I'm, I'm a well-rounded entertainer. I didn't get to stay on the show long enough to show, you know, yeah. what all I could have done. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, mentally, it prepared me okay. for the competition because pageantries, real pageants are cutthroat. You yeah. know, you deal with a lot of emotions, some good, some bad. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to worry about cheating. and it, So it allowed you to prepare for the different personalities you're going to interact with. Mm -hmm. Skilled is skilled. The one thing about any entertainer, if you're not diverse in this 
-hmm. you're not going to get that far. So you have to be diverse in this craft. The challenges wasn't anything. My my biggest dilemma for me is I wasn't up to par. My, I wasn't feel, physically fit. Mm -hmm. Had I been physically fit, that would have went a whole different route. And I ain't even assuming we, that's sure not we the all. That's not even a debate. I think we all know. <laughs> yeah. That would have went. And I'm not mad. I'm glad that I can actually. It's inspiring for me yeah. to fight back to get back to what I used to be. So it's amazing. But yeah. it's You don't. Pageantry can work in your favor. I don't think it would hinder you. I, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. um, it couldn't because we have talent. All yeah. the categories we have, we have a lot of fashion categories, but we have talent and we can't be complacent in our talents because mm -hmm. they get old. So you have to reinvent yourself all the time. So I don't see anything being a problem or hindrance. It's just a matter of their opinions. And I think like, you know, everybody know opinions are like, you know, they like nice job. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. With your health, with your, with your health issue that you had, um, obviously, well, I want to say first of all, how you doing now? I'm sure you know a lot better than I'm, I'm 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 fine. Okay. Um I'm stronger. Okay. Um I'm a little fatter. Oh. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I'm I'm doing good. The checkups are going well. You know, okay. I still have the ostomy bag. Um okay. I'm gonna be reversing it soon, but it's like I'm trying to see make sure like I don't wanna be down yes. in this moment. You right. understand? So I want to make sure I at least ride this moment out, mm -hmm. then go and do what I need to do, mm -hmm. then prepare to go to All Stars to get my crown. <laughs> she coming for all stars already. <laughs> coming, coming. How did you with with the bag? Why did you why did you decide to hide it or not mention it? And then you know with it because that's I have a for a friend who is a nurse practitioner and my best friend and he when we watched the episode together he was like there are people that can't even walk you know that have that and so for you to be up there with the hula hoop performing lip syncing all of that like that's just pure strength. So why were you, not why, but how were you able to hide it? And what was your decision on making a decision to do so? Well, I'm a very, very, um, I'm trying to see how would I how categorize myself. Um, I'm, I'm responsible. Yeah. Anything that I do, I'm responsible for. So therefore, I don't want to take, I don't want to take pity or sympathy. I've always worn on my merits of just being great at what I so I didn't want to come here in this competition that I had been dreaming to be a part. Well, hey, look at me. I'm damaged. Um, show me some some sympathy. I didn't want that. And I don't want the girls to feel that. I didn't want the world to know that. You know, um, I wanted to compete on the level of everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to reveal it like I did to show you are the only thing that can hold you back. Yeah. Any situation or anything you're going through, as long as your mind is good, your mind is always going to be stronger than your body. And if, if you want something bad enough, you will figure out a way to get it done. I didn't want it to be seen. We do drag. It, it wasn't a bad thing. Our stockings and stuff come up <laughs> to here yeah. anyway. You know, so, yeah. um, the only thing about it is the ostomy system mm -hmm. is not uh, designed for long wear of garments that's going to create uh, moisture yeah so that that was the biggest thing so like when um, I'm dancing and performing if it has gotten loose I can bend a certain way yeah and it will wreak havoc you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I'm still trying I know I'm still performing mm -hmm. but at the same time I'm trying to control this area so hiding it was not a problem I'm a sure. dancer I've been a dancer for 30 years I'm not thinking I don't have to think about camouflage. You know how many, how many times we've had to camouflage? This is second nature to me. So mm -hmm. this was never a situation other than in my head. You, you understand? It yeah. was my personal situation. I didn't allow, if you notice, no one brought it up during, before I announced it. Yeah. Because you couldn't see it. You don't allow your circumstances to dictate, you know, the outcome of what you're trying to achieve. You don't, you know. Keep going, push through push through. If you want it bad enough, you're going to push through. You know, back in the day, uh, a lot of the girls wasn't masculine and the boys like masculine guys. So what did you do? You had to push it up to get you what you need, <laughs> to get what you wanted. That's just, that's that day is it at now. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old trend and current trend. <laughs> um, with, I think that like, that was, that I think that, that was really big. And you know, when my best friend said, I was like, that is, cause you, you could, like I said, you could never tell. It was, it never affected your garments or if, were you able to, you were able to basically, if it did, no one knew. 
Um, did anyone in the work right. know or just literally no one but yourself? Mm. No one but me. And like I said, like the, when I when you saw me in the confessional and I mentioned it, mm -hmm. it was after I was off the show. They just aired that at that moment. You get oh, what I'm saying? Okay, so literally because no I get, one knew until no, you. Okay, makes sense. Okay. No one, yeah, and I guess it was like, oh, are you serious? So they, oh. you know, that's me. <laughs> Okay, you were able to do a, a, a depth drop, slight depth drop to the previous episode too. Now, how you pulled it off? Well, it's it's on my left side. Okay, okay. I I dip. You dip right. on your right, <laughs> so it didn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's smart. I was like, man, wait a minute. How did... <laughs> oh yeah. Uh uh. No, I, I I kept it straight. It was it didn't move at all. <laughs> how are your? How's your family? How's your kids? So you have three kids. So how are they and how yeah. have they been, how, how have their response been to you being on the show uh, and just all the major success recently too? It's kind of like, um, my kids, I'm daddy, I'm father. Mm -hmm. So therefore they don't know to shit like that. I never put it in their face. They knew mm -hmm. to make, you know, they knew I did it. Yeah. My, my, me and my daughter got, my daughter just said, and give me my name back. <laughs> she always <laughs> get mad. That's your daughter's but, name. Um, your daughter's name is Tamisha. Yeah. That's okay. my daughter's name. And, um, they're, they're, it's kind of like, wow, we don't know this person, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to really digest it. Yeah. It's not a bad thing, but it's like, <clears throat> okay, now how are we gonna do this? Because that's my my daughter talking to her uh, her brother. Now, man, how are we gonna what are we gonna do with daddy? <laughs> how, how, we, how do we approach this? Because they never knew. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They knew of the drag. But I respected them so much to where I never put it in their face. Not that I was ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. It's I didn't want. Uh, it's a censorship. To want to kind of censor. You know, I mean, they're kids. They're, they're your kids. So I, I have a dog, and I'd be like, close your ears. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna, you wanna keep some and protect a little bit. I understand that. Right. Right. And you know, I don't let I don't I don't have them attached to any of my social media. Yeah. I protect them at all costs. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Yeah. And when they're ready, I welcome it. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But until then, private boots. <laughs> now, how you how you think they gonna feel about you saying you a grown ass woman <laughs> twice on this show? <laughs> you know what? In 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 this, it, it, I had a problem with. It. Let's say that. But that? in the moment, I had to let that little girl know. <laughs> you know, in that moment, I had to let that little girl know she was not. She was talking to Tamisha. You're not finna disrespect me, little girl. You ain't gotta tell me that. So that was that, the moment. I, heard, I was like, Ooh. that was the moment that I said I had. I, I if I if I was looking anywhere around the room, my face turned to the screen like, <laughs> wait a minute, because I felt like that was definitely my mama or my grandmother. <laughs> somebody said I'm a grown ass woman, <laughs> and I said what I said. I was very like, okay, let me pass this. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm glad it resonated. A lot with the African American uh, family because that was real blackness mm -hmm. on our behalf. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very up. exactly. Was it was it Black History Month? Yeah, I think it was today. I know it wasn't there. It, it aired right before, right? It was it was it was a good break, a good <laughs> a good entry <laughs> to <same> it. Way. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh. So I think at this point, so with that, I saw I went to your website, I saw your merch. I gotta order my merch, child. Don't 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 get me. Um I definitely want the little girl shirt, so I'm gonna have to order some stuff. So how's your merch doing and like what are you you have some upcoming things? Cause well, obviously we're still in COVID, but in in Atlanta, y'all are essentially kinda open. So like what are some upcoming things that we can expect from you? Um, how's the merch and just that fourth path? The merch is amazing i've sold right now to this day um almost 800 pair of shoes um i saw yeah. i saw the shoes i saw the shoes too the shoes are amazing but you know like my merchandise i didn't want to approach it like the girls have approached it in the past yeah i'm a fashion designer i have a clothing line coming out mm -hmm. so okay. why would i start with what I, I do, I have a yeah. shoe line coming out. Uh, <laughs> everything that you see is is part of my collection. So I wanted to introduce people to my style. It humbled me to know that, you know, my first pair of shoes, now keep in mind, I did, the shoe collection is designed. I'm mm -hmm. still adding stuff to it. Mm -hmm. um, the clothing line, because I'm doing a ready to wear. 
Okay. I have a couture line coming out later on, but it's some things that I have to get in place for that. Mm-hmm. But this ready to go line is amazing. The merch is selling like crazy. I am so grateful. Like, I just would never thought that my life would come and manifest like this at this point. Now, if I was 25 and I was on my grind and I was, because I was mm-hmm. turning it back then, I would expect this. But to know that God still had grace and mercy on me at the age that I am mm-hmm. and allow everything that I went through to come back to not just bless me, but to encourage other people mm-hmm. to know that if he did it for me, he could do it for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Grateful. That's all I can say. Everything is grateful. Um, I'm back touring. I'm scared as hell, being honest, but I'm back out there. I got to go get it. Um, I'm in um, Houston on the 19th and 20th. Um, and I'm returning back to my, my show bar in Atlanta, um, the Purple Dragon. So other than that, scared to death, y'all. If y'all just tip me from afar, I just drop it. I get it. I promise <laughs> what I'm going to What said is That's social right. distance, please. That's what he's saying. Social distance. Supporter. <laughs> so, I, so I can stay out here. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, just just put a little put a little cash app on your on your back of your shirt or something, so they can just cash app it to you. Everybody got that. <laughs> now, 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 watch. We started this. I'm gonna make a gown with the cash app. I'm sure am. I sure am. You gonna make a gown with the cash app on it? With the cash app on it. Watch. Oh, watch. No, I'm, I'm gonna send you a picture. Now, okay. I can't wait. And I'm gonna. <laughs> you should put on the shoes too. I'll put it all over at this point because. I the COVID is real, and I'm I'm I'll be the same. I haven't really been to a, I think I've been to one or two drag shows since um since COVID, and uh, but these places they were really open. I, I may have been a little tipsy, so I may I may you know. But anyway, how I should have been was you know here you go exactly. <laughs> People, if you come into uh, Tamisha's shows, make sure that you keep distance. Just drop it. She's I'm going to get it. I promise you I'm going to get it. She ain't scared of candy, but she is scared of the COVID. So. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I just want to thank you again. I, mean, I had a million questions, but I'm not going to hold you all day. Um, I really appreciate this. This has been a great experience. And so all of you are not on the show anymore. We are still going to be watching you hey. wherever you are because the show is only this much. Oh, yeah. um, I wish they were having, I don't know if they're going to have, say it again. My YouTube show. It comes on after Untucked. Oh, yes, your YouTube show. Exactly. I've, I've watched, I've watched the, not this recent, but the last one after your, uh, after the incident. That's the I made sure I leaned into that one. <laughs> right. I'm on over. Okay, so Tamisha has a lot going on. Make sure you support Tamisha. Uh, is there any other announcements you want to give out before we lean out? Because we have leaned all the way in today. Um, no, you know, I'm I'm trying to do a lot of great things for the community. Yeah. So um, if you are a member of the LGBTQ, SUWV, all of us, if you're part <laughs> of our community, our allies, um, just see what I'm doing. I'm trying to just make our, our community a little bit better. That's just who I am. I'm not trying to get rich or anything like that. Just trying to continue to spread love. So follow me, support me, and um, yeah, that's it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> make sure you guys do the same for the lean, too. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment. Um, Tamisha was gracious enough to give me this exclusive interview. I don't think anybody's going to get this. So you get some good content over here. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to lean out. Um, we will see you guys later. Bye.